Ladies and gentlemen, today I have a very special guest talking about communication and later on, yeah, we'll put it about, talk about kids and how we can have them engage more and learn as they do that. And to help me discuss all this is my guest, Joy. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really so excited, excited to be here. here. I'm equally excited to have you here. And actually, as I looked you up on LinkedIn, the thing I saw was a communication uh, expert or practitioner. Yeah, I think the word was practitioner. And just based on that, maybe you can share with us as a, for people to be able to communicate well. It is good for them to communicate effectively. Yeah. So how would you describe effective communication? So it's interesting so, that on my LinkedIn, I put myself out as a communications practitioner. I, yeah. I am just passionate about intentional living. So in which form that comes in, just to be your authentic mm -hmm. self and tell your story is what I'm all about. But what I would say effective communication would be once you relay a message, an opinion, um, a thought in a way that the receiver is able to understand and act upon. So if you need the, the receiver to, um, let's say, read or, or, or buy or um, engage in whichever way, share, um, mm -hmm. you create a message in a such, message, a that, such a way that um, they're able to, to understand and to action. Yeah. Okay, good. So at least there's a way you communicate and then the other person is able to understand what you're saying and they respond appropriately. Um, I know communication plays a very big part in terms of uh, people progressing in their careers. Um, this channel mainly we talk about career development, growth and all that. So yeah. what, how would you say, why is uh, communication quite important when we are talking about career growth and development? All right. As many things as you're growing your career, uh, yeah. many, things many things come together. Come together. I'll think I'll about think it as about a, recipe. a recipe. If you're cooking, you're baking a cake, and for example, you forget to add sugar, it's going to taste, you know, a bit off. Um, if you forget to put the baking powder, it's probably not going to rise. So in the same breath, as you're growing your career, there are things that there are elements that come into play. And so when we talk about uh, communications in terms of your growth, I would just say it's in terms of just branding yourself. OK, so you don't want to be known as the girl who sells mandazi. And yet <laughs> the skill set that you bring um, is in terms of communication. So you need to be in the people's minds when they think about, OK, we need an MC for this office. Who do we call upon? you're the person they need to have in their minds, okay? Yeah. We are not yeah. judging not around, judging the, around the... the issue of, so who's a great MC? We already know. So so is a good communicator, you know? Yes. Um, and so I would say just telling your story um, as you're growing, you know, because we start and we grow and we progressively grow. Um, so in terms of just um, communicating what is right about you, what is authentically true about you will help you in terms of your career growth or just opening opportunities for you. I, I really like that because I know of uh, several people. Okay, there's a plane passing by. <laughs> I know of many people who really miscommunicate, yeah, and they are known not for what they are really good at. And as you say, if you're a good uh, communicator, people will know you for who you really are if you're good in. Uh, to, uh, as an MC, if you're good in your work, even as a coder, programmer, or you are very good when it comes to singing or whatever it is. So at least being able to communicate that and not leaving it up to chance, like it is the world that decides to who you are, yeah, or something of that sort. And, and I really uh, like that. So I, I would like to know your story. Like, how did you get into this field of uh, communication? I have a very interesting story and it's so interesting even as i'm sharing i'm talking more about food like recipes, like recipes. than <laughs> <laughs> this field of communication so growing up or after i finished my from four i don't know whether it's a level or a level i think it's a level i had an interest in culinary art 
So my mom took me to her friend's uh, hotel and said, you have an experience and then tell me if you really, really want this, this career path. And of course, um, I did my internship. I learned very nice things, how to make a tart, very fancy things. <laughs> And then um, um, after that, I was just like, that, day, day, this, this career, this career uh, uh, unless you don't see sunset and sunrise, sunset. this is it for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And because I like, I, I, my life is very colorful, you know, so I was not so sure about the schedules. But I, I also feel like my mom didn't sell me this uh, career very well. I think she showed me all the things that are not working for it. Everybody in the family who had gone to Switzerland, studied, come back, done their thing, and still were not successful. So those are the things she sold me, plus this experience. And so at that point where I was making a decision where to go and uh, what to go and study, she said, every office needs a communications person. You can't miss work. That's what she told me. <laughs> and so I set off. Uh, mm -hmm. I studied in Malaysia. So they took me to school in Malaysia. Uh, I did my three years in mass communication. I majored in marketing communication, so advertising. Uh, marketing um, is what I specialized in. And then I came back. I came back with such passion and power for, you know, um, branding and helping SMEs tell their story and creating visibility for brands. Mm. I came back with that. And I said, everybody in the family who needs this skill, I am going to be available. <laughs> anyway, long and short of it, I really have not practiced communications in the way that I dreamt of it. But I did do my first internship at Norfolk, um, and I, I helped them with their social media. So it's been very progressive for me in the way I envisioned it. So I don't see myself as a journalist, um, and neither do I see myself as, I don't know, on radio. I know I do have the voice, some do say that. Um, yeah. But I have really um, taken a different, a different, in terms of just telling stories and creating visibility for brands. So if you want me to do your logo, if you want me to tell your story, if you, help me, you want me to help you th think through the concept of your business, I love that. And that's where I try. So, oh, yes, very interesting. I found myself very interesting. Here. Yeah. So um, when it come, uh, uh, comes to communication, which one do you think is the most powerful form of communication? I know we have visual, we have audio, we have, uh, which is the other one? Is the written. And the written one. Uh, yeah. what, what do you think would be uh, one of the most effective way of uh, passing through a uh, message? I would say a combination of both, if not all. Okay. okay. So <laughs> you'll realize these days most people consume small, short videos. Okay. So it, it, it depends on, you know, somebody could be a visual learner. Uh, and another person could be an audio learner, learner okay so that's how best they consume content and so if you only give them one option you're really limiting your audience but as as well as as i've just talked about it's really progressive a lot of we've moved so much from a picture and a caption to a video and so many people are consuming short short videos more than they are consuming any other form of content so i would say a combination of all of them is most effective so give people options ah so it's not just either this or this but a combination would work well and and yeah. i really believe really that because like the short videos just shows number one we are not here to take the longest time to get information what is the shortest way to pass the information and the fact that there's a video there's some caption so there's both written, visual, and the audio, they all work together to pass the message, yeah. Now, I, I know you also haven't been, uh, you, you said you did not, you, you don't practice communication as much as possible. Maybe you can share with us, what, what is it that uh, you are currently engaged in? So, uh, it's interesting, we had this conversation before we started, but I do a whole host of things. <laughs> I don't believe I can be boxed, you know. Um, so in my current season, I run a kids club. The kids club was birthed from um, the COVID season. So basically what happened is where I would live, and then we lived in Bimoro. And all the parents would be like, and then in Jamchese. In English, that means go outside and play. <laughs> And there's only so much of and then in them chase for one year that the kids could enjoy. And so I found an opportunity. 
Yes, it's okay. We are still oh, on. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I found an opportunity for me to engage with the children. So what would happen is I would go, we would read a book, and then I would construct just small sessions of intentional play. So I would structure the play. So whether I want us to um, sing a song or learn a song, whether I want us to dance or learn a dance routine, anything, anything that would be short, uh, you know, let's talk about the world, uh, open an atlas, let's go through it, things like that. So that's how it was birthed. Uh, slowly by slowly, there's a lot of interest. I remember the first time I did baking in my house, the kids were like, when are we coming back? Like, me, sign me up. <laughs> mm. And so how my communication comes in is I would create a newsletter for every parent just to communicate the activities that we are engaged in. All this thing was at no cost. Uh, and then of course things have opened up and we've gone back to normal. And I said, um, I still want to keep the same um, engagement with the children where I am because we have since moved. And so I, on Saturdays, I have the kids come over to my house and we do activities that engage them in learning that is not the traditional uh, blackboard and chalk and a teacher. You learn through your experiences. So you learn through baking, you learn through sharing, um, you learn through singing and dance. We, learn, we dance a lot and we read. Yeah. So I'm very keen on reading a story or storytelling with the children. And so, yeah, we create experiences for children around learning. And that seems to be quite fulfilling. You enjoy doing uh, that a lot, yeah? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I, 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 I have, I have <laughs> I've come to love to teach and to also find out that I'm actually really good at any time, any opportunity you give me, <laughs> I find mm -hmm. myself, I'm not lecturing, I'm not, you know, but I'm, I'm teaching, I'm coaching, I would say, yes. Oh, you're coaching through the process, yeah? Yeah. And I really uh, uh, like 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 that. Um, sometimes we start our career on one path, but we mm. find ourselves in other areas where we are still very much uh, satisfied and flourishing yes. that area, which yes. we would have known before. Like in this case, had it not been for the COVID, uh, this wouldn't happen uh, happen to. So as uh, we finish up. What would be some practical steps you would advise someone if they want to improve on their communication? Because as much as yes, you're running a kids club, but I'm sure yes. there's a lot in terms of communication skills that you're passing across, which is yes. there's a different way you communicate uh, to children. There's a different way you're communicating to the parents. I like the fact that you're sending out a newsletter. So if someone was to improve the, like, their communication, what, what would your advice be to them? So there's, there are lots, countless opportunities um, for you to harness the skill of communication or just grow in it, okay? One of the things that I found myself doing is I joined the Toastmasters Club um, just to help me with the public speaking, you know? And Toastmasters also is very grueling because I've had myself say um so many times. <laughs> and it's one of those things that they help you just with your public speaking. So I would say, put yourself out there. So whether it's in a family meeting, they need somebody to write the minutes, volunteer. That's where you learn, okay? Whether it's in um, a group, you're just a group of friends. I always find myself in, in the group of friends. I'm always the one who's organizing people, relaying, you know, gathering, you know, gathering the conversations, summarizing it, you know, organizing the thoughts, you know, and that kind of thing. So I would say put yourself out there in whichever space that you find it, and you'll see that you keep growing. So you can volunteer, um, whether it's in a church group, whether it's in a sports club, you know, whether you play a sport or whatever it is you can put yourself out there um i don't know if there's any other thing i had written okay yeah i would say read uh books if you can um i'm also very big on listening to podcasts um what else did i talk about doing and uh, yeah and then put yourself out there so whether it's in your social media people will engage with you based on how authentic you are and how you tell your story. So it's not just a picture, but it's a picture that tells a story. And if in that day you were sad and you took the photo and you communicate that, um, the, the truth behind the photo, people really engage with that. So I found myself in my social media, anytime I post a picture of 
I don't know, food or um, a place where I'm at, it's not, it doesn't get as much engagement as a picture of me or my family, you know? So I find that more people engage with me as truly just me being authentic, you know, as myself, my true self, yes. Very, very interesting. And I like the fact you mentioned about reading books. I know books are one of the key ways that you can be able to learn a lot yeah, mm -hmm. I have consumed several communication books and other topics in terms of uh, as a coach and also pursuing maybe marketing, business and all that. What would you say is one of your favorite books? I know we hadn't discussed this, but you can still uh, tell us what book would you say you read maybe latest or over your life like has had a big impact? So I have a very interesting book. <laughs> I want to show it to you. Um, and I forgot to say one thing, that for you to improve or to be a, be a very good communicator, you also need to be a very good listener. So I think I'm also in that process of <laughs> and learning and relearning how to be a good listener. So this is the book I'm currently reading. I don't know if you can see. Uh, yes. But it says, my, if my yes. husband would change, I would be happy. <laughs> Um, and, yeah and of course uh in marriage it's one of those things that <laughs> it it will it will be tested and it must grow you know so your communication skills will be really honest at the utmost level <laughs> in marriage I so i've really been enjoying this book uh okay. it was recommended to me by my sister i'm not so sure where she got it but i do know my mother bought it for her yes uh -huh. so i like a lot of self-help books a, mm -hmm. anything that um would help me take one or two steps so i know i've read ikigai i know i've read um will smith i will um recently so i'm, I'm a big reader and the, the books that i struggle to read i just mm -hmm. go on youtube and i look for the audio version of the book and that's how i engage with the books if at all i'm struggling ah thank you i i like that i'm also much of an audio person I struggle reading a physical book through to the end, though I still do some books. You can't find them on audio and I listen to audio. I like that book. I'll, I'll look for it. Yeah. Uh, if my husband would change, my life would be happy. Oh, uh, my life would be happy. Ah, oh, an interesting title there, right? Yeah. I can see Lydia here comment saying, um, very helpful. Thank you for uh, this topic. Um, more and more people. But if you have any question, feel free also to can drop it in the chat. We can Absolutely. be able to uh, uh, read it too. So I think that is mainly it. Um, if one, someone wants to get in touch with you, they find whatever you have shared to be uh, valid. They want to get uh, in touch with you. How would they do that? So I'm available on all social media. Uh, mm -hmm. On Facebook, I go by Joan Natalia Waraga. On Instagram, I'm Joy Akini. On LinkedIn, I'm Joy on one day. But the easiest way to reach out to me is on my LinkedIn on Joy on one day, as well as my email, which is on one day three at gmail.com. It's right there on your screen. Uh, yeah. Shoot me an email and I will respond almost immediately. Okay. Thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, your last parting shot. What would you say to our audience as we finish up? So I'm really passionate about living intentionally. So in whichever way that looks to you. And so I would encourage everybody to just live their best life and be very intentional about the things that are true to you. So whether it's family, whether it's career, um, whether it's um, time management, the things that are true to you, um, do them uh, authentically, live intentionally. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I really appreciate you joining me. Guys, and until my next uh, session where I have a guest or one of the videos that I drop here, we are out.